Well, hello again and welcome to everyone and welcome in particular to a, another new speaker in the DFO Monday Management webinar series. Uh, Seema Sharma is a dentist and an experienced practice owner and she's going to talk to us all about upskilling your team. This webinar is being recorded and will be available online afterwards so if anything is unclear then of course you can always watch this again or any of the others in the series and please do forward the link to anyone else you think may benefit. But um, without any further ado then, I'm going to hand over to Seema and uh, I will be as interested as, as all of you, I'm sure, to hear what she has to say. So, uh, Seema, it's over to you. Thank you very much, Derek. And thank you to everyone who's tuned in today to um, watch my first ever webinar. This webinar is about how to build a high-performance team. Uh, and for those of you who don't know me, uh, as Derek said, I've been a, a dentist since 1989, um, have set up four practices, and in recent years have spent my time uh, diverting my interests to training uh, practice owners, practice managers, and teams on how to run a well-oiled, smooth dental practice. So this webinar is about how to build a high-performance team. Do you find that if you walk into your practice sometimes, you see at least three things that you would do differently? Sometimes the phone could be ringing, the receptionist is ignoring it because she's speaking to someone at the desk. Um, perhaps someone has forgotten to put the last set of instruments through, decontamination last night again. Does anyone ever seem to have any time in your practice or does everyone feel quite overworked? In recent times, we have certainly had a lot of regulation thrown at us. And it's become very difficult for practice owners and practice managers to keep pace. We've had things like the radiation guidelines for a long time. We've had communication handling. We've had infection control uh, training and, and um, regulations from the Department of Health. And then recently, we've had the great big book of CQC thrown at us. And uh, many people will know that Dentabite provides a huge amount of support around CQC and compliance. So leadership seems to have become a bit of a challenge for absolutely everyone running dental practices today. And it's been a very rapid pace of change, and there is more change to come yet with a new contract on its way. For many people, this has meant that the balance between career and life has become very, very tough. And there have been several indications of people wanting to give up or feeling they just cannot cope. And we hope that some of the things that we talked to you about today will help you to see a way in which to rationalize some of the work that seems to be coming our way these days. At Dentabite, we know it's an obstacle, but we like to try to encourage a view of being optimistic and seeing opportunities in the burden of uh, paperwork and administration that has come our way. We live in a connected world, and there are many, many software solutions and many um, training solutions which can be deployed to help to make life easier. I think the key thing is the way in which we approach our day-to-day -day life in dental practices now. Attitude is what it's all about. And the, the, the main thing that we need to think about is where is it that we could make changes? Stepping up from day-to-day -day operational management to leadership is really where we need to be going and certainly the GDC has recently issued guidelines for newly qualified practitioners called uh, Preparing for Practice, which now includes management and leadership as a skill set that's required for new graduates. So what exactly does leadership involve? It starts with a vision. What is your vision statement for your practice? I like to use this kind of a template. Our vision is to be the number one at whatever we do, for whoever we do it, Describe how we deliver it and describe the benefits of working with you, in your case, your dental practice. To give you an example, I'll show you our vision statement, and that's to be the number one practice management solution for forward-thinking dental teams by blending personal development with operational support and management software to maximize their individual and collective potential for runaway success. Your vision statement should be built with your team so that everybody buys into it. And having just a vision statement on its own isn't enough because it will be something that sits in your head unless you communicate it. Conversely, 
if your team do what they've always done based on training they've had previously um, or at, either at your practice or at a previous practice, it may not fit with the vision that you set. Vision without action is a daydream and vision, an action without vision is a nightmare. So how do we implement this? We often find that 80% of the work we do delivers 20% of our, our results. And conversely, 80% of our headaches and trials and tribulations come from 20% of the aspects of, thing, of deals, things that we deal with throughout our day-to-day -day life. One of the ways we can change this is to take a look at the resources that we have at our disposal. We always think of money as a resource, of course, and our premises, the place from which we operate. We know time as a resource, one that we're in short supply of. But the resource that tends to be underutilized in dental practices are the people who work for us. And I feel that sometimes this is because we haven't stepped back and put enough time into upskilling the members of our teams in order to distribute workload across our teams. And I'll show you how I see this. At Dentabite, we have this image of cogs. Imagine that you are sitting in the middle as a leader or a manager. And imagine that you're handling all of these aspects by yourself, trying to keep these cogs turning. Marketing, day-to-day -day patient care, safety and compliance, monitoring and quality assurance. It's pretty tricky for one or two people to do all of this by themselves. Really, where your time should be focused is on operational control with some really good systems and financial control because ultimately we are in business and if the financials don't work, patient care falls down. Now into the team and let's think about what we can do with the team to make this a little bit easier for ourselves. If you take a look at the top of this cog, if you as a leader could train your front of house team to take on monitoring and attention to detail for the patient journey and patient care, and that includes thinking about marketing, whether that's marketing from the point of view of gaining word of mouth referrals or external marketing. And then if you could take your nursing staff and distribute some workloads across them, looking down to the left. So for example, decontamination, quality assurance, fire safety, um, stock control, those sort of things. Moving to the bottom right, as a manager, your role will be to make sure that the operational control works while everybody else focuses on their own roles. And that cog diagram there forms the basis for all of the training and all of the support services that we provide here at Dentabite. Here's some ideas of roles that you could perhaps think about distributing through your team. A customer care lead for front of house services, an information governance lead for looking after confidentiality and information security. This is particularly key for NHS practices who have to fill out the information governance toolkit these days and comply with it. Infection control lead for monitoring daily processes, validation, quarterly audits, that sort of thing. And then a health and safety lead or a workplace safety lead to look after all the safety issues in a, in a practice which need to be documented and monitored on a regular basis. So um, monitoring of incidents and systems that are put in place to maintain your practice. This fits very well with the NHS Leadership Framework, which talks about distributed leadership. I won't go into this right now, but if you Google the NHS Leadership Framework, it will show you that leadership these days is moving away from a top-down hierarchical system to distributed leadership and facilitated by a culture of feedback, not a culture of blame. So let's take a look at your team more closely. Are you leading a group or are you leading a team? In a group, everybody's doing their own thing. They have independent roles, they can be fragmented, they get bogged down by and can often be inflexible. In a team, however, the roles are interdependent. There's a cohesive identity across the team and the team stays on course because they're working towards the same goal. This is key. Your goal as a practice owner or as a practice manager is to take your team towards your definition of business success. However, for every individual, 
that works for you, they have their own individual definition of success and what they were looking for when they came to work for you. This is depicted by this diagram where your direction of travel as a team is for the business and each individual has a personal journey for success. The place at which these intersect is called the job. If we zoom in on that particular idea, for those who are working towards maximum personal success and satisfaction and maximizing their contribution to the practice, this works very well. And these tend to be our favorite people in the practice, the people who seem to be on board our systems. But what happens if somebody is working towards their own success and satisfaction, but not really contributing to the cohesive practice requirements? That can be tricky because they may be a hamster on a wheel working very, very hard, but their goals aren't aligned with ours. What happens also if the converse is true? Somebody works very, very hard for the team and is a valued member of the team, but their personal life isn't in balance. There's a real risk that that person could burn out. And then, of course, you have the sort of person who's doing neither. And really, one of the tricky things about this is that we often find we spend most of our time working on the people sitting at the bottom of this diagram, whereas really we should be working on the two to the left and right to help them to reach the same goals as we have. So what does this require? There are three characteristics that I look for in a cohesive t uh, team. One is a shared goal. The next is that they work collectively. And the third is that they have leadership, either from the owner or from the manager, ideally from both. For this to, to work in a practice, there's a set of requirements. And I like to group these into these four sections. We need policies. We need a practice rule book so that everybody knows what the objectives are. And then we need procedures, which are how-to guides to help put those policies into action. However, policies and procedures are absolutely no good on the shelf. The only way in which they will be implemented is by providing training. And I like to use a blended training approach. I recommend that people start with online training because it allows learners to learn in their own time, at their own pace, in their own space, and then to spend some time discussing what they've learned at practice meetings, and then by distributing practical work-based tasks such as audits or patient surveys, because we learn best by doing. And then, of course, we need to have monitoring systems, because you can do all the training in the world and have all the great ideas in the world, but things do fall over. People get busy, they forget to do things, calendars don't work, uh, distractions happen, and so we need monitoring systems. When it comes to compliance, these are risk assessments, audits, that sort of thing. When it comes to monitoring the patient journey, it could be feedback, surveys, focus groups, reports. Whichever way you look at it, every business that succeeds tends to have monitoring systems. Just think about Virgin or any airline and think about any hotel, spa or restaurant you've been to recently and you'll recognize that feedback is key. At Dentabyte, we've built an online tool to help you with all of these things. So we have the Dentabyte Compliance Cloud, which gives you access to lots of monitoring tools and management tools. One of the things we do to make life easy is provide a set of resources full of policies and procedures which you can put into your own document zone so that you can distribute them to your team. When you do distribute them to your team, you're able to send them and have confirmation that they've read them. Another product that we have is Back Mentor to help, to help teams to learn. Research shows that if we listen to a lecture, we retain 5% of what we learn. If we read, we retain 10%. If you use an audiovisual method such as this, you retain 20%. To move to higher levels of retention across your team, we need to use methods of demonstration, have meetings, and get active discussion going in the practice, and then hand out tasks so that everybody can practice by doing. One of the best ways to learn is to actually host a meeting, be a chair for a meeting in your practice, and try to teach others, because the level of research you have to do in order to teach has to be much higher. At Back Mentor, we have an online learning platform which allows you to earn verifiable CPD across 
32 subjects to do with compliance, practice management, marketing and core CPD. I like to encourage people to use a management calendar to get organized. It's a very, very simple document which we can email you. My email address is down to the left of the screen. And we split management into two sections. The left hand half gives you scheduled tasks that you should do as an owner or as a manager. And the right hand section gives you all the tasks that you can delegate to others in the team. If we focus a little bit more on managing the business, the left-hand column there, you'll see that there is a requirement every quarter to look at your financials and to look at your marketing plans. We leave one month free every quarter for operational issues to ensure that patient care is constantly in focus. We facilitate that by giving you tools on BackMentor to learn about financials, and I will certainly do um, a seminar on financials and marketing at a later date. And we have a whole journey that you can travel through on BackMentor to build and create a personalized marketing plan. The idea here is to give you the tools to help you to think through the sort of things that will help get your practice out there. We also have tools to help you with operational control. We often get told that people want to be um, more organized and have better systems, but they don't know where to start. So we've created lots and lots of little tasks to help with this. Coming back to the management calendar, the next column for the owner or the manager is to manage training. Now what we've done here is given you some suggestions around what to train in every month of the year. Again, we can send you this calendar, and it will just help you to plan your training so that nothing is missed. If you'd like to use our training, and you don't have to, but if you'd like to use that mental training, we've created videos and quizzes and tasks around each and every subject that we think is relevant to today's and tomorrow's dental practice. We have Tracy, for example, Tracy Stewart, who runs a fab experience module for us on that mentor around the patient journey. So a customer care lead might enjoy watching that. Coming back to the calendar, in order to upskill your team, there needs to be motivation, appraisal, and reviews of their performance. Keep these simple. In the first instance, just have informal chats with your team members on a one-to-one -one basis and ask them what they'd like to learn. Most team members like to have their roles enlarged and they will come and ask you if they can get involved. If you'd like to use the cloud, we have an area where you can retain your HR records and where you can record CPD. You don't have to again, this is just a suggestion, but any form of recording works, and I know a lot of practices still use paper records, which may become cumbersome in the long term, but are working for the moment. When you do issue a training guideline and ask the team to train up, as I said earlier, it's a good idea to have a meeting. And before you do, pull together some policies and procedures so that you can take them into your training session and discuss how they can relate their training back to your practices visions, which you set right at the beginning with your policies. The right-hand side of this now gives you all the sort of tasks that you can delegate to the rest of your team. Now, this first column here has systems that really should be monitored on an ongoing basis, such as patient satisfaction, complaints, incidents, um, cleaning audits, those sort of things. Use a task manager, the manager. Some people use Google calendars. Some people use their own um, iPad calendars. Um, we have a task manager on the compliance cloud where we have pre-populated every month with suggested tasks for training, management, and everything that we think you need so that you don't miss a trick. To the far right, you'll see that we have a selection of audits. Now, I recommend that you conduct a records audit every quarter and an infection control audit every quarter. The far right column gives you my recommendations for monthly audits that you should be conducting. These audits are as important to make for compliance as they are to make sure that your team stays on track with keeping up to date. Because compliance done in a rush or squeezed into a month at the end of the year 
can be very, very overwhelming for the whole team and can cause a lot of dissatisfaction. So these tasks can be audits, risk assessments, surveys, as I said before. And to give you an example of an audit, here's one that we have on the cloud, which is a records audit, where you can take 10 sets of records and click through the answers, and the software will generate the records result, audit result for you in a pie chart which you can share with your team. You don't have to do this traditionally. Practices have used paper audits. But collating the data and getting any useful information out of a paper audit can be very limited. I hope you found that useful. I'm very happy to take questions from anyone who's listening. And do email me if you'd like me to give you some more um, information about any of the areas that we've talked today. The key take-home messages are, number one, step up from working in the business to working on the business. Upskill your team using whichever tools you can get your hands on, whether it's the free CPD that you get from magazines such as Dental Fusion, or whether it's online software-based systems such as ours, and then distribute roles out to your practice team. If you'd like help with creating job descriptions, I'm very happy to send you some templates that you can work with. Thank you very much for joining me on this Dental Fusion webinar. Um, can can you hear me okay, Seema? Yes, I can. Yeah, lovely. No, I was I was obviously most impressed with that, with, with both with the presentation and also the graphics. Um, one of the things I want to see is if the system can cope with all that spinning spinning around. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, by far and away uh, one, one of the best presentations I think we've had. So. Okay, um, thank you. Incidentally, uh, Seema and Tracy Stewart, who she mentioned there, are, are working with Dental Fusion as well as with individual dentists on compliance and training issues and both write for Fusion, the members' magazine. So we're trying to encourage people to listen to these webinars and to join Dental Fusion. So for the first time, we are offering a discount code to anyone who listens to this podcast, either live or in its recorded form on YouTube. So if you enter the code 1971, when buying a membership online at www.dentalfusion.org, you will get 10% off either practice or associate membership, and this is valid until 31st of December 2013. And as I say, that also applies to anyone who listens to this um, later on YouTube. Um, otherwise, that about wraps it up. I uh, hope it's been helpful. So for now, thanks once again for your time and attention. <laughs>